Hello everyone, I'm going to show you a little bit about the plugin I created. It's called Nonpain 3D and you can uh, use it in Grasshopper to create your own paths and translate that into G code for 3D printers or planes for robotic arms 3D printing. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank everyone that contributed to this project. I'll put the link of them on the description. Thank you, Leonardo, Luis, Marcio. Uh, go check their work because they are incredible. Okay, guys, so let's dive in. So here on top, you have all the components of the plugin by now, okay? And they are separated in categories. So you, uh, it's usually straightforward. So you stop, start here, go to here if you want. You don't need to, go to use those, but layer generation, probably uh, the path generation. So having a few, your travels, uh, the helpers, so you have the support, the non-planar support, the planar support layers, skirt and brin, pots and model, print order, so you can order your curves. Uh, some things to robot printing or mood axles printing, uh, so you can align your plane planes to some kind of uh, plane or vector, or the normal printing planes are going to show you this in a bit and we have the simulation and G code compiler but this could uh, increase as well if we create a G code compiler for four and five axis printers that I'm uh, thinking about add in the future okay so the first thing here is the you can configure your printer here or not this is not mandatory uh, of course anything here is mandatory the important thing is is what the components ask you okay so for example i started here with this v wrap of a of a fan which is uh, basically a, a one surface here okay and i use the array components here on the layer generation so you can uh, multiply like putting the layer the quantity of repetitions how many layers you want uh, it's probably going to take a while because it's processing the whole G code right now, but you got the idea. So you can increase the amount of layers that you want. But if you have some issue, you can just click twice and see what's going on inside. Usually I made a, a, a good organization, but there are some other components that don't. Okay, so here you can see whatever is going on and you can just tweak and make it better if you need for some reason or repair it and please if you do so share in the group that will help a lot in the future version of the, the plugin okay uh, let me just check something no that's okay so uh, we have here the support layers okay so we basically takes the bottom surface which is actually the same uh because i'm creating the these layers from the top and not from the bottom so uh I, you can use the same and i put a z offset distance so you can easily like remove the the part you can adjust that for example let's put this 0 0.3 here so it gets a little bit closer to that okay um the layer height as well and i put you can change it here okay but of course you can just grab the the component that you need and great you don't have to follow this framework here okay so here um you have the infill components this component uh, is not working in the best way possible right now but works if you just use one surface like this uh for now okay uh you so you, you can see here it asks you for the layer surface so you put the layers that will create your components so with that he will create this pattern here and you can increase the the density you can rotate it you can increase the amount of walls although this is very painful <laughs> to process so 
you're aware of that, I would say that the two walls are perfectly confined in the most of the print, so... Okay, that's it. But by now I'm using, uh, as an intersection model, if you see here, what I, I basically did was to uh, fragment the surface, so I removed the walls. You can see the, the distance of the walls here, and I, I take those surface, and I intersect them with a bunch of planes, which are not planes, they are circles, because this is the way I discovered that is the most um, efficient. I tried everything in the intersection, I mean, okay? But it works, so okay. If some reason is not intercepting, try to increase or uh, change this value, okay? So right here, we have intersections. And what I do after that is to use those intersections to create points in the walls. And then I lose those points to trim them and create the pattern we need, okay? I'm working in, on a different kind of infield generation that will probably increase the speed by, I would say like 10 or something. That is this one here, okay? Just to show you guys a little bit so you can understand what you're facing. <laughs> so this one here, um, so this one here is basically using points in the surface of the, so the domain of the surface we map it to create the the point the lines we need okay so this is of course uh that surface okay but i'm creating some domains to uh decompose the surface into isoprenes and then I have to trim the end of the wall here so we can uh, create the zigzag pattern, but um, it's not working by now. I'm having some troubles with lists. So if you have some idea, please, it's here. Try to fix it. <laughs> okay, let's go back. So after the infill, okay, I have the infill and I have the support infill as well here that is just basically the same thing. So we have the support layers. We plug the support layers into the support infill. It's asking here. It's just a matter of see what it's asking. And we have this, okay. Um, one, th one thing that is very important to you to, uh, to address when you try to print non-planar is if you use a pattern like this on the support, you should put uh, probably a little bit higher the the um, the density, but you should make sure that your first layer after the support is perpendicular. And here you can see it's I don't think it is, but it's something that you should. Be aware, otherwise you're gonna try to print in the same direction. It, it is going to drip in the middle of the support. So please be aware of that. Okay. Okay. So here you have the simple components, just to organize, just entwine. But I made this because nobody, maybe you don't know what entwine is. The idea here is to make sure is accessible for everyone okay uh and that's why i don't mm, i that one of the reasons that i don't push to a c sharp or a python component yet just to make sure everyone can open see what's going on make changes make it better uh, make it work for everyone okay so um this is the bottom uh the, the skirt or if you or bring sorry and is basically just put the bottom surface the same as the support layer and you can put an offset for example if you want like let's say 20 millimeters 
okay so too much but you got the idea so if you want a bring uh, you put it zero if you want a skirt you put on some kind of set that you want okay so after that we combine all uh, uh, all the curves together we could put a beautiful uh, review here as well if you want uh, and then we arrive to the travel part of it which is very interesting i think because uh, i probably spend one almost one year trying to figure this out how can we avoid colliding with the part so i created this uh call arc z uh, z hop arc that you can increase the size of it so the travel is not straight path it's uh an arc well not an arc but a b rock curve uh nerve curve sorry and you can even put the tolerance for for example if something is not higher than one millimeter difference between the point that you are to the point that you're going to you can put some kind of threshold for example to put five it will transform a bunch of them into straight lines because we think that uh should be the threshold for that okay so this is very useful i think and of course we will not solve every kind every every collision issue but i think this is a good starting point because you can uh, enter here and see if the curving that you create is colliding with the model if so you can create a, a different kind of uh, motion and it's a good i would say a good starting position to develop the kind of solution i just uh don't have the manpower anymore to develop all by myself uh, okay so here you can create a little hot end so you can modify it to for example have this is the i think this is the volcano i have to i don't have sure but if, oh, you got the idea you have the hot end model here you can basically put your hot end model here as well okay as a wrap you just need to put the uh, the tip of the nozzle in the origin point so you should be okay it will uh, let, take that into account and maybe with this hot end model we can use as well to combine with the travels to see if there is some kind of collision in the paths okay okay so we we just arrived to the good part of it i think the simulation i like this um so here you have an option of simulating the whole path you can see here mm -hmm. And it didn't show the travels because if you want so you should press two and you're gonna see the travels happening. So let's see if we can achieve some kind of okay here. So this is the arc z hop that I told you. So you see it does the arc movement and continuous print. And you can increase the preview with as well if you want for better understanding that helps a lot and uh, you can turn off the heat preview just have a normal curve okay you can increase the precision of the curve that you're going to put to print so right now it's three uh, three point six degrees so we can decrease that or decrease let's decrease that so it gets a little bit more blocky, I would say. Um, and, but you, if you see here, that's the one of the things I think is great, is that you can understand what the changes that you are doing in the model are going to affect your print. For example, if you decrease the precision, we have the 
3,000 vertices here, we go to 8,000. So the code would be way faster, way easier on the to process, and uh, try to keep this number down. I would say that. Um, and here you have a bunch of printing data. If you pick the travels and connect to the extrusion, uh, the extrusion travels printing data, you're gonna see this here. So you can preview the total printing time, the total material that you're going to use, counting supports and helpers, and the part weights, okay? And the whole uh, length of your going, to, what you're going to print. You can change the, the type of material here, for example, if I put PLA, you can see a little bit of change because the density of the material. Let's put PP that is way uh, lighter, I would say. Uh, okay, so you can see here the changes. Okay, uh, understand that this does don't affect the temperature that you're going to print or the cooling settings. This you have to put here on the settings. Okay, so you have to print speed, not the temper. This is just basically sliding. But you can see if I put here, if I change anything here, you can see it's already generating in real time, sort of, uh, how it's going to print. Okay, uh, it can decrease and increase the flow height, and it all generate here. Okay, uh, the travels. Okay, uh, if you want to make a little animation of the the process of the simulation, you can try to plug this into the preview here. I would not do this right now because I don't know if it's going to go. Okay, uh, this here it's for me one of the most important components because it can give you the possibility of uh have the output data the achievements i don't know how to say that but achievements for for example generative design things like uh, galapagos or uh, wallace or something you can use those to understand how changing for example if i change the rotation here let's say like 60 you're gonna see on the left the things moving here, like the total amount of material, total print time. This is just changing the the properties of the infill. But imagine even create components that could create smart infill based on the uh, element uh, finite finite element analysis or latest and things like that. So we can use those data here that are collected the print and uh, use as targets in generative evolutionary kind of algorithms, okay? Okay, so um, that's it. And we have the G-code compiler, which is basically you put the name of the file that you want here, you put the uh, sorry, the directory here, on whatever you want, and you click this button, and you're gonna have the G code that you created. And this is just another class as well. So here you can see what's going on. If for some reason, um, I don't know, something's not working correctly, you can try to see here if some expressions like the uh, the flow expression, for example, robotic printing, people usually don't do like this, they use the layer time. So you can just open here and see what's going on. Okay, so after you export the file, you can open the Repetia host that is a program that understands the type of G code that you're using, which is with the relative extrusion mode, and you can see everything uh, working here, okay? 
it's not a perfect solution but seems to be working by now and the good thing about uh, the the RPG host is that you can edit your G code here as well if so you can uh, see very clearly what's going on here and it's good program to do that so I advise you to install that as well and see how your G code looks here so I'm going to show you now a little bit about other components that we have that could do something I think it's interesting okay so this for example is on the geometry modifier the vertical information so basically it deforms a curve uh, and you can tweak some settings and after that you can just plug that to a patch and after that you could just create this non-planar layers by using for example this thing that I create here okay uh, to trim the curve out so we can import this curve this curve and then I have my non-planar layers here and then of course you can plug that into the infill curve and what I will just use the uh, outer boundaries I don't know everything is possible okay so this could be an uh, interesting way of creating some geometry uh, the planar layers demo it's basically the planar layer generation that we are used to in every slicer but here you can plug for example the direction that you want that to be sliced for example here you put the uh, y value and this allow us to create planes for robotic 3d printing as well this is helpful and you can of course combine even in the same printing um, planar layers with non-planar layers that's the great thing about the grasshopper environment you're not stuck to a way to do things okay so here we have this b-wrap model and uh, the normal layers tries to uh, find the curves that uh, are perpendicular to the normal I don't know but <laughs> tries to find a better path to print that uh, this is very experimental uh, you can open here uh, on this one we have some plugins here uh, I didn't have the time to try to remove them but uh, I don't know basically that's it but you can see what's doing here and maybe try different stuff if you need okay yeah for some reason right now doesn't appear the bottom whatever let's go um, and the PF path layers demo it's similar to the one before but uh, because we have this like rounded shape but if we have for example uh, this one here it's working better because uh, I'm using a curve here to orient them and you can pick this curve from the b-wrap itself that's what I did here and extend the curve so we have this perfect align and you can use this or any kind of curve for example this one other curve here I draw and you can use this to create the layers and after the layers we can just plug that into the uh, path generation to create our shape for now it's just the zigzag method but uh, in the future there will be concentric and other stuff that I'm working down here for example let me show you a little bit of concentric so here is the development part so you can see the ideas and if you want to to help uh, you can just see and try to create some stuff okay so this is the concentric I'm trying to do but right now you can see it's, uh, it's not good enough yet uh, but and I'm using a plugin here I'm using I think clipper no no actually not no this one I didn't use but uh, I removed it but it's not the way it's supposed to be yet 
but I think it'll be just two more weeks and I can add this. Okay, so here you can plug your curves, slice in the way you want, okay? After this one, we have the uh, the plane generation, okay? So we have the aligned plane, print planes and the normal printing planes. So let's start with the aligned ones. So for this, we have to de decide the type of alignment that you want. we want, the planar path, okay? So this uh, is the path that we want to do, okay? Uh, and we can choose, you can see here, these are the planes that are being generated. Okay, we can increase the distance between the planes. Uh, we can align to, oh, for example, following the path of the, the curvature. So we will like rotate it with it. Um, and we can set as well to align to a plane that we put here, for example, or a direction. Okay. So this would be very useful as well for robot 3D printing. You have the planar path and you select what you uh, the direction. I didn't test it with things that are not planar, but it would be an interesting thing to test in the future. But please try so if you need. Uh, this is the normal printing plane. So you have the the surface, the, the the layers that you create before, okay? And you have the printing path that you design it, okay? So it's here. And we combine the two things, we can have the planes in the direction that the normal of that point, that coordinate is pointing. So this could be used in the future for generate for the five axis um, coordinates, as well uh, as robot 3D printing, as you can see here on this demo. So I take those, those planes, I input them on uh, the KUKA robot. I'm not actually thinking about the singularities and stuff, just want to show you it's working okay so you can see here it's uh it can orient the printing and it's um, just a matter of after that you develop the solution to integrate your extruder okay uh, i tried this with robots as well and works pretty pretty good uh i unfortunately i cannot show more okay and we have some utilities here as well for you just to make your life a little bit easier so this is uh, a little cube so you can try your uh, extrusion okay uh, i don't remember if this is one single path okay or is this multiple ones okay yeah but you can easily, easily turn this into a spiralized mode if you want. But I would uh, invite you to try your interactions. Okay. And this one uh, is actually for that. Um, so we have two cylinders here that you can increase the radius, whatever. You can uh, increase the size. And you can even put them apart to try to understand your the retractions that you are doing and for example this this would be a good example if we plug this into the travels let's see okay so here you see how that works you have a curve you can plug into uh, when it's asking for a curve versus the surface you can plug into or as a layer. So here you can see the travels, okay? And for example, it's going straight, but if you want to change it, we can 
make it arc. And basically that's it. I hope you like and please don't forget to share your opinions and see the development part of it as well.